I guess this is normal now. By My Lost and Found. Read by My Lost and Found. Chapter 2. Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. Summary. Izuku's second kidnapping, but this time he meets a certain lavender-haired boy. The next time Izuku was kidnapped just so happened to be three months later, a few weeks after his sixth birthday. He had been extra vigilant since his first kidnapping. After all, the best way to escape a kidnapping was not to get caught in the first place. Today, however, he wasn't as observant as normal. Kachan didn't come to school that day. The teacher said something about the blonde being sick. But all Izuku could focus on was the cruel grins on Tsubasa and Tasaki's faces, ones that promised pain at recess. They delivered, which ended up with Izuku running out of the schoolyard and into the first alley he saw. He sat there crying for quite a bit before he was able to calm down. He was sore and his lungs hurt from sobbing, but he had to go back, no matter how much he didn't want to. Before he could move himself to stand up, a damp piece of fabric was forced over his mouth as a strong arm wrapped around his body. A sweet smell overtook his senses, and his head began to blur, and unconsciousness claimed him. This time, when Izuku woke up, his hands were tied together in front of him. It was go time. Izuku pushed back any budding fear and slipped into mission mode. The first thing he noticed about the room the only thing that was illuminating the space was a small window on a wall near the ceiling, the kind of window you'd see in a basement, which is probably where he was. Before Izuku could stand to check out the window, a whimper breaks him out of his analytical spiral. Turning, Izuku realizes he isn't alone in here. In front of him is a kid. They seem about Izuku's age, with soft-looking lavender hair that seems to defy gravity. It's clear they've been crying. Their hands are tied the same way Izuku's are, except they have a gag in their mouth. Izuku has new priorities. From the looks of it, this is the purple-haired kid's first mission. It's Izuku's job to comfort them and explain what's going on. He's sure that he would have cried even more his first time if Aka hadn't explained things to him first. It was scary waking up somewhere unfamiliar where you didn't know what was going on but they were on a mission. It is curious, however, that the other kid had a gag while he doesn't. Looking down, Izuku checks the other's shoes. He's not met with bright red, but instead a pair of worn-out running shoes. So, not quirkless. Which means they must have a scary quirk, probably voice-related if the gag is any indication. Izuku shakes himself out of yet another analytical spiral. He has to focus. There's someone in front of him that needs his help. Hi, he starts. The boy looks startled at the sound, as if just realizing he had company. It's okay. I know it's a little scary, but this isn't my first time getting taken. I know what to do. At that, the boy seemed to calm down ever so slightly, breathing returning to a normal pattern. Izuku takes this opportunity to fish the pocket knife Aka gave him from his shoe. The purple net gave him a weird look, but Izuku just got to work cutting himself loose. The rope isn't the best quality, so he makes quick work of it. As soon as he's free, Izuku moves over to the other kid. He tenses at the sight of the knight approaching him, so Izuku makes sure his movements are clear. It's okay, I'm just gonna cut your gag off. After a small nod, Izuku slices through the fabric, letting it fall to the cold ground. While getting started on the other kid's bonds, he begins to explain. My name's Izuku. What's your name? Aka said not to use family names in places like this. She taught me everything I know. The purple net hesitates for a second before replying, voice a little hoarse. Hitoshi? Izuku's smile brightened as he continued. So, Hitoshi, is this your first time being taken? The lavender-haired boy nods silently. That's okay. This is only my second time, but the first time I was taken, I met Aka, and she explained everything to me. I'm gonna do my best to tell you everything she said, but in case I miss anything, I'll show you the list she gave me after we escape. 
When Hitoshi's restraints finally snapped, Izuku tucked his knife back in his shoe and tried to remember everything. Uh, okay, so Aka said that when we get taken, it means we're just on a mission to escape. She said that this kind of thing is just part of being quirkless, like me, or having a quirk that people think is scary. Which doesn't really make sense to me because no quirks are bad or scary, but that's what she said. Anyway, we're on a mission to escape unnoticed, like underground heroes. Do you know what underground heroes are? I didn't. Aka told me about them, and now Eraserhead is my favorite underground hero. Hitoshi's lavender eyes lit up for the first time. Eraserhead is my favorite, too. He spoke up with excitement, still in a hoarse whisper. I've seen him patrolling by where I live before. Izuku really wants to talk to his new friend. Because, of course they're friends now. They have the same favorite underground hero. About Eraserhead, but they need to focus on the mission. So we're on a mission, just like Eraserhead. We need to be stealthy and smart to escape. There's a window in here that I might be able to reach if you boost me. Aka said windows are one of the best ways to escape. The two young boys made their way over to the window. Hitoshi is surprisingly tall, which means Izuku can just about reach. He tries to push it open, but it doesn't budge. He looks over the window before noticing a small lock on the latch. It looks simple enough, but he'll need his picks. Hitoshi lowers him down easily enough. Izuku immediately grabs his lockpicks from his shoe, and Hitoshi gets another odd look on his face. Why do you have those in your shoe? Oh, Izuku forgot that having knives and lockpicks in your shoes wasn't normal for most people. Aka said that you always should have a knife and lockpicks for when you get kidnapped. She keeps hers in her shoes because she says kidnappers don't take those, so I do too. Hitoshi nodded, in thought, probably thinking about how shoe knives were in his future. Izuku gestured for the purple net to lift him back up and got to work. In no time, Izuku was pushing the window open and crawling out. He secured his legs before leaning down to pull Hitoshi up, which was hard. Really hard. If Izuku hadn't been working out more for training, he wouldn't have been able to manage it. Still, he was left a panting mess when he finally managed to get Hitoshi out. After Izuku was done dying, the two of them ran away from the building, Izuku checking behind his shoulder every now and then, but before they know it, they're on a main street, far away from their kidnappers, and safe. After Aka had helped him back to the park for his first time, Izuku studied maps of Mustafa. So, after taking note of the streets they were on, he realized he was only a 45-minute walk from his school. Hey, uh, Toshi, do you know how to get home from here? Izuku asks, spying the worried look on his friend's face. Not really. I don't think my school is too far away, but I don't know how to get there. Before Hitoshi can work himself up into a panic, Izuku pipes up. If you tell me the name of your school, I could probably tell you how to get there. I looked at some maps after my last kidnapping. Oh, Hitoshi lets out a relieved breath. It's Spitsumi Elementary School. Izuku knows where that is. He doesn't have anything to write directions down on, so Hitoshi better have a good memory. Hitoshi was just about to leave when Izuku remembered something. Oh, before you go, we should meet up this weekend so we can go over the list I told you about. I can even show you a few things. Hitoshi agrees, so they settle on a meeting spot, halfway between their schools, before parting ways. Izuku jogging his way back to school. He's not exactly sure how to play this one. It was easy enough to lie to his mother when she thought he'd only been missing for ten minutes, but he's been missing from school for most of the day. He really hopes they didn't call his mom. He doesn't want to worry her. Eventually, Izuku just settled on sneaking into class. Most of the time, teachers don't really seem to notice he's even there, so maybe they hadn't realized he was missing for most of the day. As Izuku slips into his seat, the teacher doesn't even give him a second glance, just continuing on with the lesson. And when he gets home, his mom is acting normally. No one noticed he was gone. He figures that's just another part of being quirkless. Saturday night, after his mom had gone to bed, Izuku snuck out the window and onto the street. He didn't want to be lying to his mom, but most reasonable parents didn't let six-year-olds out of the house alone, let alone after dark in an unfamiliar part of the city. 
Izuku knew he could handle it, though. If he could handle missions, he could handle this. Not many people were out this late, which helped Izuku avoid suspicion. Again, unsupervised six-year-old. He was meeting Hitoshi in a park. It was one Izuku hadn't been to too often because there was one much closer to his home, but it was almost smack dab between their schools. When Izuku finally arrived, he saw Hitoshi sitting on a swing. He wonders how Hitoshi was able to sneak out tonight. Or if he just had really irresponsible parents. Izuku was only able to manage his own great escape because his mom used sleeping pills at nights thanks to her insomnia. Just 30 minutes and she was out like a light. Izuku slid into the swing next to the lavender-haired boy with a smile. It was nice to see him again, even if it was just for this one time. Izuku would have loved to keep being friends with the other boy, but from his experience with Akka, it seemed like the people he met on missions should stay strangers in his daily life. He wasn't sure why, but Akka had been right about everything else, so he'd trust her on this one too. So, Izuku started, I brought the list and some lockpicks for you. I have plenty of extras, so you can keep these after I'm done showing you how they work. Hitoshi looked over the lockpicks with barely hidden intrigue in his eyes. Probably because he was really into underground heroes, like Izuku. He was definitely going to talk to the other boy about them after they finished tonight. He'd never had anyone to talk to about them, so he was really excited to- No, focus, Izuku. You need to make sure he's prepared for his next mission, just like Akka did for you. They spend most of the night going over the various things on Akka's original list. Izuku showed him how to do some of the things he had to look up, like how to fall properly, and most importantly, how to pick locks. They also spent some time dumpster diving for a pocket knife Hitoshi could keep in his shoe. Turns out, Akka was right again. If you find the right dumpster, there are a frightening amount of sharp things, including a pocket knife. Eventually, though, they had to go home. So they said their goodbyes, and Izuku turned away. He really hoped it wasn't the last time he saw the lavender-haired boy. Maybe he'd see Hitoshi on his next mission. Turns out that the gods must have been listening to him that night, because that certainly wasn't the last time Izuku saw Hitoshi. Far from it. Ah, uh, yes, then we come to the end of the first, uh, little uh, part of this series. Uh, I, okay, you know, I have the thing all artists have where they look at their old works and cringe. And this, this is from, like, the start of this year. It's only, like, I don't know, the, just over six months, but, ooh, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, because I got a little bit of cringe reading it, but it's not the worst thing I've written, so, mm. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. I'll be waiting.